Hey y'all. I'm actually fixing to um, show you why I've had my hair in the clip in these pictures. But um, today, this video is about self-care. Different things that you can do, you know, uh, if you're having a day that, you know, you just really can't get out of bed, you know, maybe, you know, your, your joints are aching or you're having a lot of skin issues, um, you know, and so you just, you're, you're in bed, but, you know, you want to do something so that, you know, you occupy your time because let's face it, we've all done it. If you have a chronic illness, those days that you're in your bed, they start to drag on after a while and it's really easy to get depressed and fight our depression. Um, we, we have to fight our depression by, by different things that we can do as far as just in bed. I mean, and everybody's different. You know, maybe you crochet, maybe you like to draw, maybe you like um, that's actually my thing. One of my things anyway is doing the makeup because I have a, not only lupus, but I have a skin condition called uh, pityriasis lichenodes chronica or pleva. Um, I get sores. Uh, it's basically my skin, my immune system is fighting my skin. And so it'll tear, like it'll make scars. I've got scars all over my body. You know, God bless him, my husband, you know, he, he made me feel better about him because, you know, he, we kind of joke about it that, you know, he's the only one that's got like a leopard wife, you know, or cheetah. It, it's just something that you have to face. Now, um, if your skin is sensitive, like mine is, what I use um, is the way I start out is like with some kind of, uh, I know these are baby wipes and yeah, I'll just, I'll uh, support the local brand because uh, we have the plant in Paris. But I always get the unscented, you know, wipes, just the water ones. And there is actually another type of wipe called a water wipe that is really good. I just like them because I use them for several things. I mean, obviously, the first thing I want to do is I want to wash my face really good. And anybody that's got Pleva can tell you that you actually, you know, you have a lot of irritation to your skin. Um, I've, I've gotten them in my eyes before. Just think of like a little water blister that pops, like maybe from a fire ant. For me, that's what it feels like. Some people have said that it feels differently for them. But for me, that's what I think of is, you know, if I'm in a flare with the pleva, they'll pop up and it looks like I've, you know, got little blisters. You know, um, you might think maybe chicken pox, you know, kind of look that way a little bit too. But it's like it's actually our own immune system attacking our skin. So suffice it to say, I use fragrance free stuff. Um, I try to keep my face clean if I don't have makeup on it and I use clean makeup. Now, like I had said in one of my other videos, I haven't gotten any product placements, you know, that are paying for anything yet, but I will tell you, you know, things that, you know, I have found that helped me and, you know, I'm not opposed to product placement. So if any of these companies decide they want to, you know, do it, Hey, I'm right over here. But this is one of my favorites. It's a company called Pure Lease. It's, uh, and I don't know if I'm saying that right, y'all. I'm country as heck. But it's P-U-R-L-I-S-S-E. And it's got the, the long mark over the U. So let me see if I can get it up. Yeah, Pure Lease. And they have different products. Now, this is the matcha green tea. And it's for people that have like real um we'll call it sensitive skin you know if and i know that looks funny but there's a method to my madness so I put that there and i'm just gonna take this and i rub it all over my face i mean everywhere across my nose 
eyelids and all the way down your neck. You want to go, um, you know, as far as like down your neck and it'll absorb after a minute or two. But it feels so good. I mean, you can tell it's got a little bit of fragrance in it, but it doesn't bother me. Um, I've used this one. I've used their Lotus one. Um, and I mean, it's it's very good. I mean, or at least to me it is. Like I said, you know, and I, I'll say it again, I'm not a doctor. So if your doctor has told you something different, don't listen to me. Listen to your doctor. But if you, you know, want to know what I do, this is what I do. Now, I use, one of the things I do is I actually use a company called Ipsy. And I put my link in the information, you know, if y'all want to try it out or whatever. I mean, they don't pay me either. If anything, you know, if I got enough people to join, I could get some free product. But, you know, I, I don't get money from them. Now, um... If you, you know, have sensitive skin, you can indicate that, you know, and different skin types have different problems. Like because of my pleva uh, and my lupus, I have hyperpigmentation. Um, you know, my African-American sisters, y'all, it's noticeable when y'all have the, the skin changes because of the hyperpigmentation. And, you know, it, it's rough, but we have, you know, tools at our disposal that we can use to moisturize our skin and that we can use to help um, soothe it. Uh, I know this lotion that I just showed y'all is real soothing to me because the worst is when I get them in my eyelids and in my eyes. And I mean, it hurts, you know, but the lotion does seem to help. Now, I've been sitting here talking for a minute, and y'all probably notice I don't look like I have eyebrows. <laughs> and I do, I promise, they're just really blonde. Um, what I do, I've come up with a couple different things, but first, um, and I really don't have a set one that I use for this. Uh, right now, this one is, well, shoot, let me get my glasses, I'm getting old. Okay, this one that I'm using right now is Gold Fadden MD Wake Up Call, and that is your under the eye cream, and I actually put it on my eyelids as well, because, you know, you don't want to leave it real gloppy on there, but if you do it like under your eye, and on your eyelids, it's supposed to help with like the puffiness and the um, like dark circles and, and stuff. Like I said, mine, you know, I, I have dark, dark circles and it's just because I have a lot of issues going on. I'm on chemotherapy right now. So, you know, that has actually helped my pleva. Um, it wasn't that long ago that I was broken out really badly with that. And like I said, that's the ones that looks like water blisters to me. Um, I know I have people in my uh, community that I'm a member of on Facebook that, you know, they face these type of things. And all I can say is just keep your chin up and keep moving along because, you know, if you... If one thing doesn't work, then, you know, try to get your doctor to try something else. Right now, what I'm on is a light chemo. It's called Cellcept is what they have me on, and it seems to be working. Um, I'm going to tell you right now, which I'll do another one of these on medications later on, but um, I will tell you that on um, Cellcept, it is, uh, you know, as far as uh, the first week for me, it was really rough, really, really rough. And I'm looking here because it's saying my connection's unstable, but it's also saying I'm live. So I'm going to check on my phone because I don't want to keep talking if y'all aren't hearing me. Let me see here. 
go to YouTube. Got to love technology. Let's see here. Okay. I'm showing. I'm showing. Okay. <laughs> I know that sounded funny, but I was just waiting to see if it would. Okay. I, <laughs> I know that sounded funny. Okay. That's weird. <laughs> it's weird listening to yourself. Okay, so I just wanted to make sure that it was recording, and it is. Uh, there's going to be a little lag, maybe, because um, it's saying my connection's a little unstable, but um, that's kind of me, a little bit unstable. <laughs> now, what I do, after I've let my moisture and my, or my moisturizer and, well, let's back up, clean my face good with fragrance-free baby wipe. That's what I've done. Um, then moisturized, did my eyes, let them kind of set for a little bit. Then my next thing that I do, like I said, I might look like I don't have eyebrows, but I really do, I promise, is I actually have to make them show up. Now, a lot of y'all use um, like the little brow wax and stuff, and I'm sorry, I'm cheap. I, I mean, I I'm cheap when it's something I can save on. Now, y'all might be wondering what this is. This is just plain old hair gel. It's like one of the big, um, I can't think of the name of the bottle, but you get it at the Dollar General, and it's like two bucks. And I just squirt a little bit of it in here every now and again, and it does just fine. Because what you want to do, if you got really sparse eyebrows like I do, little hack here for you is take you some brow gel or i mean if you do want to you know go ahead and pay to get the brow wax you can too a little bit more but it makes them kind of well you know how your hair looks when you put uh, gel in it makes it kind of darker and a little bit stiffer so i'm just doing that right now and let that sit. And usually what I do is I'll do my up, like, okay, this part I do up, and this part I make more of a line to where it tapers. Now, let's see here. I had my paper a minute ago. Let me see what I've done with it. Aha, here we go. So I told y'all when I wipe my face that I keep my paper and use it for other things. So I actually just took the brow gel off of this. And I'm going to show y'all a hack. And I learned this, you know, just by trial and error. Um, because I didn't have any brow gel one day. And like I said, without it, I don't look like I have eyebrows. But I didn't have any kind of brow gel or darken or anything. But I do have like a brown lipstick and so what I do and I found it is like the best thing because like this is one of those like color stay type lipsticks and I just kind of paint it on there I don't use it as lipstick anymore but what I do is I take that you know and you can see where I put the lipstick on my little wand here and I'll take that and go back over like I did with the brow gel, just to give it that darker color. And I mean, I know that I could do this with a pencil, but what I have found is this actually, for me anyway, works better because I have such baby fine little hairs. And I honestly am not that great with an eyebrow pencil. Um, I tend to either do it too thick or too uh, wide, and that's not somebody I want to talk to, so we'll turn it off. Okay. Now, I know right now I look funny because they're kind of thick, but I'll show you what I'm going to do here. Okay. So, we set that to the side. Take your wipe, and what I do 
is I just double it over my finger like this and just kind of wrap it around where it's like that. And then I take it and I do the excess. And not only do I do the excess, but I go on the lid itself to taper it down, you know, to however thin I want them, you know. So let's see here, just a little more on this side. That one's just a little thick. And there we go. And so you can see what they look like, okay? Now they're wet right now, so I leave them alone. I'm not going to mess with them right now. What I will do is I will go ahead and set that rag to the side because I'm probably going to need it again later. The next thing that I do is I use a concealer. Now my eyes are, like I said, I have so many scars and you can't see them on this. It's not showing up as well. But you can see how I have like the hyperpigmentation from my lupus and I'll do like the butterfly rash at times and my eyes will have like the scars from the pleave on them. But what I do is I use a concealer as a primer on my eyes. So I'm going to grab this right fast. It's hard to do this without a mirror. But you just take it. And see how I just kind of got it on there? You want to get a decent brush set. You really do because you're going to use them. Like if you have one good brush set, you know, you can use them for different things like this. Like, you know, I, I really don't use like a hard foundation. Um, what I use, because I have uh, sun sensitivity with my lupus, I use a tinted moisturizer is the only thing that I, I use like on my actual skin will be tinted moisturizer and it'll be a concealer. Okay, so you can see I haven't blended it in yet, but you just I just take this and I'm smoothing it out. Take it up to the eyebrow. You know, you don't want to cover your eyebrow. But you're just kind of going up and over and back down. And then you get the whole eyebrow here. Or, I mean, eyelid, rather, should I say. And I typically, when I'm doing this, um, this one got a lot, of, uh, a lot of concealer on it. But I tend typically end up having to put it on the bottom, but I think I got enough left over here that I can do it without it. But, you know, everybody, it's just trial and error, you know, as for, not era, error, but you can see how wide I'm looking right there. That's because it's all that concealer. And then I've got it smoothed out now. I just kind of do it with my finger now and just make sure I've got it, you know, where I don't have any big globs anywhere and make sure that my eyebrows look right. Got them in check. I, I try to keep them, I know it sounds funny because I don't really have a lot, but they're, they're really, really blonde. And so, I mean, they're there, but they're maybe fine and they're light. And so that's why I have to do the, the color like I do. And I've just found like brown uh, brow pencils to me are just too dark. You know, I want to match my hair color and I found this matches my hair color better than if I tried to do an eyebrow pencil. All right, so we've got this done. Next thing that I do is I take my wet sponge, you know, it's wrung out and everything, but you're going to find your... Uh, in my case, like I said, I use uh, that Pure Release, and I use their BB cream because it is SPF 30. With lupus, you know, and pleva, we're supposed to avoid the sun a little bit. So, I mean, I found that this, this is such clean lotion, and I like the fact that, you know, they're vegan, and, you know, they don't do any kind of animal testing. I mean, that's important to me because... You know, I don't believe that animals should be hurt 
just over our own vanity, you know. But anyway, so I go ahead and start putting this on. And I usually try to hit my eyes first on the underneath because, like I said, I've got such dark circles. And then I'll take it and go back over that eyebrow again and just work that out. Work out that forehead. And I'm going to try to go fast. I know that, uh, you know, y'all are probably losing interest if I take too long. But just to let you know, you know, it is possible for somebody to have the issues that we have and to find a makeup that doesn't bother them. And so you can see this, you know, with my lupus, I still have a little pink going. And, and with that, sometimes, which I didn't dab very much this time, but what I do is, you know, if my butterfly rash is really showing, you know, I'll go ahead and I might put a little bit extra on my cheeks, you know. It's, and it seems so funny because it's like you cover it up and then you'll put blush on. So, I don't know. I think we're all a little crazy, I guess. But I just go ahead and go back over, like, the areas where I've got the hyperpigmentation. Like I said, i got a big one here. It almost looks like a, a vein that's ruptured underneath my cheek. And it, I wouldn't be surprised if it wasn't a vein like that. Lip, my nose. Okay, so we got all of that. Okay, so that's what I use on my face. Now, what I use on my cheeks is this one is actually a bronzer palette. Um, and I use this a lot because um with it being summertime, you know, you want to keep that look. But I use the, the brown color. And what I'll do, I don't know if y'all are familiar with this or not, but it's, I think pretty much everybody's seen Kim Kardashian do this, but you just make the three. So basically it's like you go down, cheekbone, under the chin, okay? I always start right on the cheekbone though because I really... Right now, I need to lose weight, and that's, you know, what we were talking about some of the other videos, but I don't want, like, the darkest area I want in my cheek, so that way it makes it look like my little fat cheeks are a little bit thinner than they actually are, you know, because, let's face it, makeup is illusion, you know? Now, I've seen some girls... I mean, that can just do the, the contour and, and, like, I mean, look completely different. And I haven't gone that far. I just like to enhance what I got, you know. And that's kind of, uh, excuse me while I do this side. That's kind of uh, the way I was raised, I guess you could say, you know. is just, you know, not to use a lot of makeup. You want it to look kind of natural you know, which is good, you know, um, but it doesn't mean that it's wrong, you know, I have different palettes that are really wild and bold colors, and sometimes I'll get in the mood to play around with them, and I mean, I'll, I'll be as vivid as anybody, you know, and, you know, I have friends of all persuasions, and I support anyone that wants to feel you know, pretty with makeup, everybody should have the right to play, and, you know, play with it, and just see what you can do, okay, so that is how the bronzer goes on me, now, I really don't use this color, because for me, with me already having the, um, butterfly cheeks, it seems like it's too dark, it really brings that back out, but what I have found, and this is like another one I'll, I'll kind of drop the name on just in case, you know, somebody with lupus wants to try it. But this company is called Nomad. And this particular highlighter is Balmoral Beach. And it's a really pretty light peach. I don't know if you can see that. But 
this works perfect for me. This is all the color I need because I've already got so much underneath it that I don't want to try to make my cheeks any redder than they already are. And in case you didn't see that, what I do is I hit that bone for the highlighting and then I do a little circle around the cheek. Hit the bone for the highlighting, circle around the cheek. Other areas that you want to highlight, especially if you're trying to make your face look thinner, you're going to get the top of your nose, just down that little crease. You're going to get the arch of your eyebrows. Okay. Then this part I actually do with my finger, but just kind of, you know, dip your finger in it. And I know it looks funny, but your cupid's bow and then right underneath your lips. So here, right there, and right there. And then you can go back and kind of blend it. But the reason you do that is because it actually makes your lips look fuller. Just kind of FYI. Okay. So there's all of our highlighting. And you're like, well, Patty, you had not done your eyes yet. I know. <laughs> okay. So let's put this over here. And I'm putting everything up. And I know this one's the longest video so far. But I believe it or not, I usually take a lot longer. Because like I said, if I'm laying in bed and I'm hurting, I might spend an hour and a half in here playing with my makeup. And I know that sounds vain, but it's really not. It's just I did makeup when I was in uh, drama, when I was in school. And I love, you know, just doing like different stage makeup and stuff. So this is just something I enjoy. Now, um, as far as my eyeshadow, I'm going to use this one. It's uh, Violet Boss, her Windflower palette. And as you can see, it's got like some really pretty pinks and burgundies and stuff. So, like one of my big brushes that I use for covering the whole lid. And I'm going to go in with this light pink on the whole eyelid okay so you're just basically covering your whole eyelid with this and you know just what is it to the windows to the walls <laughs> i mean you're covering the whole thing up to the eyebrow down to the lashes okay and if some of it gets over too close to your nose it's not a problem because it's not a dark color you know you can just blend it out when you go back because you still got to go back in the uh, contour your nose and I'll show y'all that and I usually do the contour and like after I put my light color on both sides that's when I do my contouring on my nose because like I said if you've got my little pink in there right now you want it to kind of blend and so again for this I just use my finger and I go on that brown a little bit just take a little bit of brown and what I'm going to do, go there, there, and on the bottom of your nose. And <laughs> I know it sounds ridiculous, but what it does is if you have a wider nose like I do, and see, when you're doing this, take it all the way up to your eyebrow, just as far as when you're smoothing it out. So I can take that all the way up there, and that takes care of any pink pigments that I have from my eyes, and then... Sometimes what I'll have to do when I look in the mirror and check it, make sure it still looks good, make sure everything's like, you know, all smoothed out. Sometimes what I'll have to do is go back in and hit it again with just a little dab of the highlighter. And then that takes care of that. It actually will make your nose, like if you've got a wide nose like I do, and make it look a little, little bit smaller and then by doing the brown underneath like that it actually kind of gives you that little bitty like cute little perky nose um or at least i think it does i don't know um it may not look perky <laughs> it may just be brown but that's the way i like it um so now that we've got the pink all the way across on the eyes this is where I'm going to come in and actually put some dark color. And for this, I'll show y'all. 
I'm going with the darkest color on the palette, and that's going to be that deep maroon. And this, what I do is I do the right on the bone line, and I do in the corner of my eye. So if you're wondering what I'm doing here, just very lightly, I'm taking on the bone and in my corner of my eye. So on this side, same thing, corner of the eye, on the bone. And then what I do, I know right now it's not real defined. Let me check that one side. Yeah, I need a little bit more darkness on this one side. Yeah. Okay. So once you got that darkness on there, what I do again is I go back into that really, really light pink. And it's important, y'all, to clean your brushes regularly. You know, if you spend the money to get nice brushes, you want to clean them regularly. And what I do is I go down here on the bottom with that light pink again on the lower lid. And then I also do it up here by the eyebrow line. And then I'll do it again on the other eye. Down here at the bottom. On the eyebrow line. And let me just double check it. It's looking good. Looking good. Okay. So, one thing that I do that, you know, not everybody does this, but I do. And the reason I said keep your, your brushes cleaned regularly is I actually have what I keep as a blending brush. And just in between uses, you know, I'll clean it out. But what I do with it is this. Because you want that to be blended into each other. And that's where a lot of people, when they're doing their makeup, you know, like if you have that really hard made up look I mean which sometimes is what you're going for sometimes you want that defined waterline and that defined you know uh brow bone and everything but if you're just like for me for daily makeup I like a softer look so now I've got that done and this is where my little rag comes back in y'all and it's so funny because, like, because I've taken that out and blended it out, my eyeshadow's, like, too far out. So what I do is I basically just, like, wipe it, like, right on the corner, like that. And then what I can do, because I still have my brush, or my, not my brush, but my sponge, I can just go back in right there on that corner where I just cleaned off the eyeshadow. And it is right as rain. Okay. All right. So next thing is going to be the eyeliner. Now, this point I'm going to make to all my friends that are my age. And we're, we all get stuck in the past sometimes. You know, old hairstyles, old makeup styles, things like that. You know, and you, you might not know that people aren't doing that anymore. You know, it's just because you get, it's just the way you're used to doing yours. Right now, the current way that most people do their eyes is to do, you line the top and then the bottom, you're just going to put a little bit of the um, darker shadow that you use. Okay. Sometimes people actually do it all the way around the eye now too, as far as the shadow. I don't like it all the way around. I just do like at the bottom, but when you do your eyes you want to have a good eye pencil and i have found this is my absolute favorite favorite ones and they come um i've gotten the black and the brown but it is um araceli and it's the ojos perfectos 
which is perfect eyes, but it's like a brush, okay? And this thing, I'm telling you, I don't want to say it till I do it, but it's near to impossible to mess it up. Bum bum. See? Then you just want to let let it dry. So you're just letting it dry right now. And while you let it dry, you can be putting up some of your stuff. Because you know you don't want to get it up on your higher, like where your your bone is, your what is that, occipital bone? No, what's your eye socket, you know. I can't think of the bone right now occipitals in your skull <laughs> but um let's see what else can i go over while we're waiting um the one thing i didn't mention the concealer i used was fair from item foundation or item i-t-e-m is the name of that company um y'all saw the moisturizers i used and the wrinkle cream i used Showed y'all my eyeliner. I showed y'all the Violet Voss Wildflower Palette for the um, pinks and maroons. Um, the Ojos Perfectos. Okay. So this is actually dry now. It's been long enough. The, this is my favorite mascara, and I'm almost out of it. And I'm hoping that it comes back to Ipsy soon because I want some more. But this is the, um, it's called Half- caked and it's the totally tubular in black this is the best mascara i've ever found i'm just like I, I need more and i hadn't looked to see but i think i'm fixing to how much it is if i just was to outright buy it the thing i like about ipsy is you can actually uh try stuff out and that way you know if you don't like it, you're not out a whole bunch of money. Now, and then I'm assuming all y'all know about the wiggle. Um, this helps with your eyelashes if you're trying to make them look fuller. What you want to do is you just kind of wiggle it when it's on the eyelash. I don't know if you can see it when I'm doing it like that. But that just kind of separates those eyelashes and then you can get it out. Okay, then I need some more on the other eye. And I usually do a couple coats. I mean, because th this uh, mascara is really good about getting, you know, a good amount onto the applicator. You know, so I don't have to, like, dip it more than once, but... I don't know, it's getting close to being gone. <laughs> and then something else that I do too is you can actually, because your mascara is shaped like a curling or curling brush, if you've got a steady enough hand to do it, you can actually set this down on your top eyelashes and roll it and it'll help curl them up. And that's what I do. And it makes them a lot thicker looking. I'm trying to figure out how I'm going to swing. There we go. It's always harder to do it my left side. I guess it's because I'm right handed. But the left side is just a little bit troublesome when it comes to application. Okay, so now we've got that. And like I told you, I didn't put any eyeliner on the bottom, but what I'm doing is I'm taking just a little bit of that darker blush that I, or darker eyeshadow that I used, and I'm getting it just in my corners like that. 
just in my corners in the waterline. See? And it gives you that look, you know, that put together look. All right. So now you might be asking what's next. Well, you want to set your face and you're going to hear people talk about baking your face. And what that is, is like if you take a lot of powder, will be it, you can like let that set and then whenever you get the excess off of it that's what baking your face is um because i don't use a lot of powder i don't worry or i shouldn't say powder because i don't use a lot of makeup i don't you know put a whole lot of powder on because i do have you know my skin issues So I don't really bake my face, but you know, this gives it just that nice clean look. And this is, a, what is it, the culture? This is the Clarity Translucent Powder. And then I'll tell you what, since I really started getting into some of the current, you know, things through trying out stuff on Etsy. Um, I have fallen in love with this. And this is setting spray, but it's, it's called Slay, and it's from Gerard Cosmetics. And they have different scents. This one is peach. And so once you got all your powder and your mascara and everything on that you're going to put on, only thing I haven't done is my lip, and I do it last. But Just do your setting spray, and then I like fan with my, my mirror. I'm waiting for my mirror to fly across the room one day. But you just, you know, you fan it so it can dry. And that actually sets your makeup. And, I mean, my makeup stays all day when I do this. Now, I've got a lot of different colors that I could do as far as the lips. Let me see here. One thing that you do, and this is just a little, little trick, is, you know, and, and I mean, let's face it, most of the tricks that we have, we've gotten from the, you know, drag community um, to make our lips look fuller, to contour, you know. And so, you know, thank y'all because y'all make us look pretty. But you just want to overdraw your lip a little bit. What I mean by that is you're just going up outside the line a little bit. And you can see how that looks. I'm just outside my line. And then the bottom, it's easier if you start right in the middle. Right in here. And then you can like start from the corner and just bring it down to it. And again, if you, what's the color thing? Where'd it go? I'll have to get it in a minute. I don't know what I did with my little pencil thing. Anyway, oh, here it is. What you want to do now is you pick a color that, you know, you want to go with this. This one, 
Let me find this one. I think I'm going to go with this one. It's a Kiss from Lottie London. It's a little bit darker. And see how you got that? I got the big overdone lip. Okay. Now, something else that you can do is if you want, you can actually do like an ombre. Uh, which, we get our rag back again. I mean, like I said, I use the, the heck out of these unscented baby wipes. But this is the same one. So, it only takes one for your whole, you know, putting your makeup on. I do that just to get the excess off of it. And yes, it's still wet, but I'm not wiping it off. I'm just basically blotting it where it is. Then what you can do, and I know it looks crazy, but you can take just a little dab of your concealer, or I like this. This is Camelina and strobe it's luminous or eliminating primer <laughs> i need with glasses but anyway you can see that it's a white okay so what i do with this is i dabbed it like that a little bit more i didn't get quite enough and then I'm going to dab it on the bottom, too. Okay. And then I'm going to just lightly, you know, how we smooch our lips to spread the lipstick. And you see what that's done? It's given me the illusion of having a thicker um, lip. Because um, honestly, my top lip's almost non-existent. So, um, just kind of do it like that. And then I always like to double check and make sure that it's the way I want it. Because the very last step that I do... Is I'll take some more of my powder, and you can see how that is, and just kind of on my lip. Keep it locked in where it's at. Okay. Clock the face. Maybe a little bit more of my peach because I like it. And it feels so good. This makes your face feel so good and rejuvenated. Because you are a fierce creature. And you want a little bit. Just a little bit. Now, I will say this. I mean, because I'm very light-complected. So, you know, I really don't have to worry too much, like, beyond here. Unless you are taking... Like, if you've got a darker foundation, let's say, especially with, like, summertime, because, you know, you might be wearing self-tanner or you might actually have a tan, but you can go down your neck. Like, you want to make sure you don't want your face to end here. I mean, you don't want to look like somebody could just, like, rip it off and there's your face, you know. But, like, if you don't, like, for those of us that 
have lupus or have pleva or scleroderma or some other disease of the skin, rosacea, if we're wanting to have that dark look, you know, because we can't, let's face it, ladies, we can and gentlemen, we cannot handle the sun. I break out in the sun. The sun knows the second I step outside, I start smoldering. My, my uh, son calls me Count Lupula. Because <laughs> it's like, if I get in the sun, I'm going to explode into flames. But if you want a little bit of a tan look, you can cheat a tan and just take it down to your clothes. Or if you want to do a full Donald, you know, you can do the, the tanning spray booths and stuff. I just really, honestly, the with the Pleva, I've tried doing the fake tanners and they irritate my skin too much. I haven't found one yet that if I found, I'm going to tell you right now, if I found one that worked without irritating my skin, I would use it, you know, no questions asked, but I just haven't found one. And it's, you know, honestly, I like having just a little bit of an illuminated glow. And like I said, I had this on here earlier because I uh, didn't want it to get in the uh, makeup. But, I mean, this is just, you know, your simple, basic, hey, you know, and like I said, I've got the dot thing going on now, and it's like, here we go, Real Housewives of Red River County, which, for those of my friends that are, you know, different areas, Red River County is basically where it sounds like we're up by the river between Texas and Oklahoma, but if y'all have any questions on anything I've shown, um, or anything, if you just want to talk about, you know, skin conditions, you know, give me a holler. Because like I said, you know, my face is clear right now because I'm on starting the chemo. I was in a really bad eruption. Um, if you look, if I, which I'm not going to stand here naked. I don't want to traumatize anybody. But, you know, I have scars all over my body now uh, from the pleva and from the lupus but the thing of that is is when you got scars it just gives me a good reason to get more tattoos <laughs> so um you know it, it is what it is y'all you can feel as beautiful as you want to feel you know don't let anyone else make you self-conscious don't you make you self-conscious you know because i know i'm my own worst critic you know and i'm to a point now i just turned 49 years old and i'm like i'm who i am i'm who god made me and i'm beautiful and so are you keep that in your mind you are beautiful and god loves you and so do i just love god as as always and love your neighbor and i'll talk to y'all soon ended. Okay.